Yo, what is going on guys? It is Royal Stoners here. Welcome back to the channel. How's the Royal Stoners army doing today? Let me know down in the comments how you guys are doing. I hope everybody's having a wonderful fucking day. My day is pretty amazing, guys. You know, I'm over here just chilling, smoking on the fried man. I got a fried man cart now, you guys, and it's a pretty good one. And I also got a new face cam, you guys. We got the Elgato face cam in the building, so check out the streams, guys. We're gonna be streaming a lot now, boys, so that's gonna be something on the channel now guys i know y'all are excited for that we had some people on the last stream and it was pretty fucking awesome come join me from now on guys because even if you don't like video games we'd be talking about some crazy shit over there guys i promise now before we start we're gonna be calling my girlfriend Allie from now on out and daniel from getting caught drunk on three four locos we're gonna be calling him carl and daniel at crazy potato who's also in my discord we got people that are in these story times guys that are really in the discord so Go join that shit, guys. You get exclusive sneak peeks to behind the scenes of the story times, and you get to see pictures and shit from the actual events of the story that happened and shit, guys. Please go join that. You won't regret it. It's really, really fun. But yeah, guys, we're going to be naming Daniel from the 3 4 Loco story, Carl, and Daniel from Getting Caught Stealing Part 1, and from the LSD Pool Party. His name is going to stay Daniel. Now, guys, I have just a couple more announcements before we get into this story time, okay? I need you guys to go on over and go check out Dankity Spankity because they're a pretty interesting person. They make some story times too and they've been really nice to me so that's all I have to say. So go check out Dankity Spankity and Jack the Goon. Go check out Jack the Goon. He's pretty fucking cool. He's motivated me to make these videos and he also watches them as well. I love you guys. Thank you all for watching my channel. Thank every single one of y'all for making this possible. I love the Royal Stoners Army guys. We grow in numbers every single day you guys. So yes just follow if you're new or subscribe now, anyways, fasten your seatbelts, okay? Grab your popcorn and your fucking socks because you know we knock them bitches off around here. Get your weed ready, get in a comfortable position, and get ready to experience this fucking story time. To start off this story, it all began inside my room. A lot of interesting things and a lot of interesting stories have taken place inside my room. A lot of drugs have been done there as well, so you guys already know this is going to be a fucking banger from it all starting in my room. I was hanging out with Nathan and DJ. DJ lived with me at this time, and we were all just vibing, hanging out, and having a splendid time, right? We had already planned on going to Sarah and Allie's house this day because DJ and Samantha were dating, right? And Cody and his girl were going to be there, so, you know, we really wanted to go. We wanted to go and have a fucking blast, right? If y'all have watched the Throwing Up in Walmart on Roxy's video, we're going to the same place, the same trailer in this story time too, okay? We really wanted to go and hang out with them, right? But before we went, we needed to get fucked up, right? You know, guys, during this time, right, I was a fucking junkie, all right? This was a fucking horrible time. I was getting fucked up every single day, right? I'm surprised. No, I think I did have perks that day, okay? So look, I also gotta mention, we were going to go get my ex first because I was gonna be lonely, right? And everybody else had the girls there, so I wasn't gonna be, I wasn't gonna be the only one there not with somebody. Guys, before we can continue any further, if you have anything to smoke, on out there smoke up because you know around here we like to get fucking stoned you guys get your pipe your bong whatever you're smoking on ready and light that shit up before we continue this story i wasn't dating ali at the time which is pretty sad but dj was dating sarah the cody was dating this girl we're gonna call dixie and nathan wasn't dating anybody so i really should have just went solo that night and kicked it out with nathan but uh, i mean that's kind of how it went but anyways we'll get into that i hit up my ex right we're gonna call lucy and i ask if she wants to chill right and obviously it's a green light that girl was a whore i hate to be rude but i'm being genuinely honest okay the drug of choice we were indulging in in this story time now guys was mda our preferred route of ingesting this drug was snorting it all right because we didn't have any capsules and every one of us enjoyed snorting shit so we were like fuck it we're gonna snort this shit right the person who brought the mda of course was dj because at the time he was ordering drugs from this person on telegram right guys in the throwing up in walmart on roxy's video dj DJ was living with me at the time.
time. He didn't come over or anything like that. I forgot to tell y'all that. I just forgot. Now, guys, don't go and order stuff on Telegram. Don't go order drugs on Telegram. Don't do anything that I talk about in this video, okay? But we were getting acid from this Telegram, dude. We were getting MDA, MDMA. We were getting all kinds of crazy shit. We got DMT from him. That's where the DMT story came from. We have gotten all kinds of things from this guy, right? Now, he has the MDA. He pulls it out, right? We're snorting this shit. I, I've never taken this shit in pill form, I don't think. But we were snorting lines of this shit off my dresser in my room, right? Nathan hit him a fucking good two fat decent lines. And I didn't really want to do that much and neither did DJ. So me and DJ hit two small ones, right? We were using plastic straws this time, not dollar bills. I remember it like it was yesterday. We were broke ass boys at the time, okay? But at least we had a straw, okay? <laughs> but you know, after snorting the MDM, the, uh, fuck, I keep on getting them confused. The, the MDA and getting fucking geek, we were almost ready to head out, right? We were almost ready to head out. I was feeling tingly, awake, a shiver went down my fucking spine when I hit that shit and I started to sweat, right? But you know, that wasn't enough for us. Before heading out to level out our MDA high, we had to level it out with a hefty dose of that sweet Bubba Kush, that sweet marijuana, okay? So we loaded up a fat ass bowl, right? And we passed that bitch around. We smoked the shit out of the bowl until it was roasted. And then we packed up another one and we smoked us a few bowls. We were smoking in my room. So like, keep that in mind. But we're standing in the middle of my room passing around a pipe, right? And we got stoned as fuck on top of being geek. It was amazing, guys. If you've ever mixed weed with like an upper or something, then you know what I'm talking about. The body feelings I was getting were insane, right? So then we finally started to get our things ready to leave, okay? DJ had to make sure he had his keys. I made sure I had my phone and shit and everything I needed for the night. I got my blunt wraps, my lighter, my eighth of weed, and Nathan had to bring his phone and his phone charger, right? I had to make sure I had my fucking weed, though, guys. That was a fucking necessity. I needed that or the night would have not went good. And DJ left his MDA at my house, okay? We weren't going to be doing any more of that that night. That was enough for us, okay? So we left that shit at my house, right? And we walked out of my room. We said goodbye to Mary Jane. We said goodbye to my grandma. We headed out the house, right? And now we got into DJ's beat-up-ass car. This car literally made noises when you rode in it because the bumper was fucking falling off. I remember it. Every single fucking check engine light was on, you guys. It was crazy. Like, the car was just barely drivable, but it worked, okay? We got from point A to point B almost every single time. Keyword, almost every time because one time a tire blew out and we couldn't fucking get anywhere, but that's for another story time, okay? But, okay, we realized tonight was gonna be a fucking crazy one, alright? So, DJ starts to pull off, and we're driving all the way to Lu Lucy's house, which was really far away from my place, so it took us a fat-ass minute to get there, and it wasn't even worth getting her, because she ruined the whole fucking experience and the whole night. You guys will see later in the story, but while on the way there, we were listening to some tunes, we were probably listening to Royal Stoners on repeat, and I'm just playing, but, you know, we eventually ended up in Lucy's neighborhood, right? Now, the neighborhood she lived in, it wasn't really a good neighborhood, it was a bunch of trailers and campers and that's not the reason it wasn't a good neighborhood the reason it wasn't a good neighborhood is because well people sold drugs there people die there all kinds of crazy shit happens there guys okay well she lived in a camper in this trailer park so it didn't really say which house was hers on the google maps i remember this really vividly we pulled up into her neighborhood and we were having a hard time figuring out which fucking camper was hers it didn't say which one it was on the maps so we were having a fucking hard time finding it right we end up pulling into the wrong place and having to back out so we start getting upset right and dj starts explaining to me how he needs better directions and i'm like i don't fucking know i don't remember which house is hers right so i call lucy and i'm asking her where do we go and she's not explaining it to me good so i hand the phone to dj you know so she can explain it to him better and not to me because i'm not the one fucking driving at this point so he's just like hold up hold up and uh while she's telling him he went into the wrong driveway right she starts to walk out of her camper and we see which camper was hers and we were completely in the wrong driveway right we're like fuck it was that one right and we're like god damn it she's out there waving she starts waving to us like hey hey i'm over here right i'm over here and it distracts dj and she just goes watch out for the ditch when all of a sudden guys boom we back all the way up into a pretty narrow ditch okay now i got pictures of it i'm gonna put them up on the screen right now but yeah dj instantly started freaking out and so did all of us we thought the night was fucking ruined you know me and Nathan got out the car and I felt water the second I did like it was horrible.
horrible. We got our shoes soaked, man. I was like, fuck. So, you know, the ditch we crashed in was ankle deep in trailer park water, guys. <laughs> ankle deep in whatever the fuck water it was, all right? And, and we're all just sitting there thinking, how the fuck are we going to get this piece of trash out of the ditch? We're all lost and out of the ditch now at this point. And they're calling, pe and they're calling people on their phones and shit. And I'm just chilling. But I end up going up to Lucy and saying what's up to her. And I gave her a hug and all that fucking ugly shit. I don't like that girl no more. She's a really bad person. And anyways, we're getting off track, but you know, I help her put her bags and her tat shitty tattoo equipment in the back of the seat the, the fucking back seat of the car and now we're just all trying to figure out what to do about this car situation Because now we have no ride to Samantha and Allie's house Now we're all gonna be fucked like we can't even get back to my house if my grandma starts tweaking or something So we're fucked man. We don't know what to do I'm standing there right with Nathan and I'm talking to him and DJ thinks hey Maybe if I put it in reverse and everyone pushes the car out of the ditch maybe we can get this motherfucker out and i'm like dude this car is like fucking what two thousand pounds guys this is not gonna work and everyone's just like bro keep up a good spirit man it might work i'm like dude i don't know okay i mean it it it, it might work it may it might and nathan thinks it's a good idea too so you know dj goes down into the ditch gets into the trailer park water <laughs> He opens up his car and gets into it, right? And he turns that sucker on, and now me, Lucy, and Nathan all gather up behind it, right? And we are in front of it, and we're just trying to trying to push it out, right? We push and push and push, guys, and what do you think happens? It, nothing. It didn't work. We put all our fucking power and strength into it, and nothing worked, right? So Lucy gets out the ditch, right? And she says, I've got this piece of wood we can put on the back tire, and we can use it to drive on so that we can get this bad baby out the ditch, right? And I'm just thinking to myself, that's an even more dumbass idea, but if that doesn't work, we have no other options. So, I guess we're gonna have to do that. So, I do what I only think is the best option at the time. I call one of my plugs, right? Now, this plug, I was super cool with him at the time. It was fentanyl plug. I looked up his name and I called him on my phone, right? At first, he didn't answer, but I sent him a picture of the car in the ditch and he finally fucking answered me. So, I asked fentanyl plug if he could come and pull us and help us out this ditch, right? And he's just like, shit, man, how far are you? How far? far is it? How, how are you sure you can't get out yourself? And I just send this fucked up dude pictures of the car from a bunch of different angles this time and shit and he's just like, bro hell no, I can't do that man, I don't know man, uh, shit I probably can if you give me some money dog, and you know so I figured out very soon he wasn't going to help unless we had money, right? So I hang up on bro, and I'm like, fuck, well if we're gonna be stuck here, we might as well be more stoned, right? So I go to the the back of DJ's car and I start rolling up in the ditch, right? And that's what I was doing in that picture in the back seat of the car. But guys, I get this swisher out and I start rolling it, right? And now we're all a little bit happier. The whole squad's excited now. You know, we got marijuana being rolled. Everybody's starting to get happy. Lucy comes over and sits beside me, you know, while I'm in the back rolling up this blunt and shit, and we're talking while I'm rolling up. But we're still pretty much fucked, we think, right now. So me and Lucy are just back there rolling up and talking about how fucked we are. Now, DJ ends up calling Samantha, and Samantha says she can get a ride and come get us, right? So we're thinking, hey, now we got a way out of here. That's our way out. But deep down inside, I still had a little bit of hope that we'd make it out of this, like we'd get the car out or something. So I get done rolling this blunt. It's a fucking pearl, you guys. I'm sitting in the back. I start sparking that motherfucker up. I take me two good-ass hits off of that bitch, and then I pass it to Lucy. And then I start to get out the car, right? And, you know, I get out the car. I go over to Nathan and DJ and everybody. Just Nathan and DJ, right? And I pass them the blunt. So now, you know, we're passing this blunt around. We're all just chilling and thinking, right? Thinking of ways we could get the fuck out of Dodge, you know? Thinking of fucking ways we could get the fuck out of here and go to the function. You see, we were at point A and everybody was at point B where the fun shit was happening, okay? We were at point A where the fucking bullshit was happening. But we weren't really thinking of much. Not many great ideas were happening this night, okay? We weren't the brightest group of individuals. But we got shit done. Well, anyways, we were chilling, smoking this fucking blunt when all of a sudden this dude slowly drives down the road in a white truck, right? And he asks if we needed any help. And we're just like, thank God. 
God. Thank God we live where we live, guys. The people are sometimes nice here, okay? They really are. They Sometimes they're really nice. Well, this guy who's wearing a hat and is super country is just like, I got you guys. Let me go get my chain for my trailer up the road and I'll be right back. So, you know, he pulls off right? and we're still passing around this blunt, just fucking smoking it. We're, we're not even, barely anyone's hitting it and I'm low-key bogarting it a bit because of how many people there was. After a while, I started to joke around like, oh, he's probably not coming back while I'm hitting the blunt and shit and we're just all passing it around. And I'm like, yeah, he's totally not coming back, guys. And everybody's getting pissed at me, annoyed, you would say. And I think uh, Nathan is just like, bro, if he doesn't show up, I'm gonna whoop your ass. And of course, you know, he's just fucking around too. But I'm like, hey, hey, bro, chill out, man, or I'll whoop your fucking ass too. That's just how the homies are, guys. If you have homies out there that are like that with each other, then you know what I'm talking about. Well, this guy pulls back up and he's got this metal chain, guys. He came back to save the day. He really pulled up and came in clutch. So, you know, DJ, he calls Samantha and is like, hey, never mind. We don't need you to pull up, right? And <laughs> Samantha and her dad were already like on the fucking way. Or no, I don't think it was her dad. It was Samantha and her friend. They were already on the way, like halfway here. It definitely wasn't Samantha and Ali's dad because he wasn't here during this story time. He was at work. I remember that. And uh, also, it's Samantha's friend that came or that was taking her to come and get us. He does not take place in this story time. He literally only picked them up to come and get us. Well, he calls him and says, hey, we don't need you to. We're getting out the dish now. And she's like, well, fuck, and turns back around. So we all hook up this metal chain from the truck to the car. And he tells DJ to get in the car. And while he's pulling with his truck back up, right? Well, while he's pulling us out, DJ accidentally steps on the brake. And we almost fucked this dude's truck up, right? He steps on the brake while this dude's trying to pull. And his bumper just almost flies off, right? And this dude just yells, hey, dumb motherfucker, stop. When he yelled, it scared us a little bit, but I know it scared the shit out of DJ. He told me later on, bro, I thought he was gonna beat my ass, but I know it scared the fuck out of him when he yelled. And thank God we didn't rip his bumper off, because I don't know if he would have saved us then if we ripped the dude's bumper off, and I don't know what would have happened, but you know, he gets us out, right, and he saves the fucking day, and now me, Lucy, Nathan, and DJ were saved, right? We gave the rest of this blunt to the guy, I remember it, we ended up giving him the rest of the blunt, right? Since he helped us and we said thank you. We gave it to him as sort of like a thank you gift. And then we headed on our merry ways. But before we could go on our way, Lucy forgot to mention that her dog had to join us. The whole entire time, we had no idea that she had to go and get her dog. Which at first, it wasn't really that much of a problem, but later on, you'll see where this becomes a problem. On the car ride there, Lucy was laying in my fucking lap. I regret this so bad, but Nathan sitting up front. I should have never hung out with my ex, guys. That's just a bad thing from the start. But Nathan sitting up front with DJ. The puppy was all over the place, fucking whining, probably fixing the shit in the car, and we we're just all thinking about how we genuinely thought we weren't gonna get out of that. We were just like, damn, how did we get out of that? That dude just saved our lives. And we were also talking about all the ways we saw it going, you know, we thought DJ was gonna have to leave his car there overnight, and that bitch was either gonna get stolen or fucking stripped for the radio or something, you know? <laughs> like I said before, I really wasn't joking. Lucy lived in a really bad area. She probably still does now at this very point in time you guys. The area we were at, DJ's car would have definitely got stolen, even if it was right in front of Lucy's house. Hell, she would have probably fucking stole it, like fucking robbed the shit. And you know, halfway there, we're just chilling and talking, and the dog just starts whining, guys. Now, this wasn't that alarming, but we didn't know what was gonna happen, so it wasn't good, alright? We didn't know what it was gonna do, okay? This little fucker could have exploded for all we knew at this point in time. We were high as fuck off the MDA. We didn't know what was going on with the dog. We were probably like, who, who, ga 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 MDA, MDA. So DJ's in the front seat just saying, hey now puppers, please don't shit in the fucking car. And because he thinks it's gonna shit in the car, right? I mean, I, we all thought it was gonna shit in this car. This little fucker was crying, okay? It was kinda sad. We're just all laughing, right? Nathan is fucking dying of laughter and we're just all laughing, having a good time because we're like, haha, your car is probably gonna get shit in or it's probably gonna get fucking destroyed because of the dog. I bet Lucy just felt fucking bad, guys, for even bringing the dog with fuck her. All right, after a long car ride there, guys, we get to Samantha and Allie's house, right? We're pulling into their neighborhood, you know? Now we're hitting corners and we're making turns, making big plays, getting to their house, right? We're almost about to get there, and the dog throws up in the fucking car right when we stop and get there, right? We finally arrived at our destination, and the car just, I mean, the dog just fucking pukes. And I'm just like, ew, what the fuck? It was funny when we were talking and joking about it, guys,
guys, but when it did happen, it was fall. Guys, imagine the smell of dog vomit on something that makes all your senses heightened, right? It was horrible. I could smell every molecule of dog vomit. Nathan started fucking gagging, right? And DJ's just like, fuck no, why? My car. And I'm just like, Lucy, you need to clean up your dog's fucking puke, because that's a gross, right? And everybody's still shooking about the ditch, and now we got a deal about this dog, man. Fuck. So, the dog vomit almost threw me out of my MDA high, alright? But we were able to shrug it all off and joked about it later, but, you know, we headed inside, right? We got out the car. We headed inside Samantha and Allie's house, our trailer, right? You know, when we walked into the trailer of wonders, we immediately said, what's up to Cody? Because that's our fucking day one homie, right? And we all talked to him for a little bit, and, you know, Lucy's outside in DJ's car at the moment, cleaning up dog vomit, so we're all in peace and quiet at this moment. You know, I'm still feeling this MDA a shit ton, by the way. I'm pretty sure Nathan was, too, because his jaw was clenched and his pupils were big, right? MDA makes me grind and clench my uh, jaw, like grind my teeth and shit. It's like so much like meth, but it's not meth at the same time, you know? I don't know if what I did was real MDA. We didn't even test this shit, but anyways. Lucy comes back inside from cleaning up dog vomit, and we're just like, hey, what's up, dog vomit girl? And everybody just starts fucking laughing. And I'm over here playing with her dog and shit, and I pick that motherfucker up, and I'm like, ah, Savinia, baba be simia. Um, and everybody fucking laughs, and I have a recording of that actually happening, but I can't find it anywhere, guys. But I actually did pick up the dog and go, ah, Savin, y'all, that shit really did happen, and it was funny. Everybody's chilling in the function, right? Me, Nathan, Cody, DJ, Dixie, Ali, Samantha, and Lucy, we basically got ourselves a little party going on. It's a pretty lit event. Samantha and DJ are sitting on the floor, right? Samantha's in DJ's lap, Ali's chilling on the floor coloring, and Lucy's also on the floor with everybody else. Now, guys, keep in mind the whole night, me and Lucy were off and on. One second we'd be fucking with each other, the other second she'd be talking to everybody about how much she hated me and talking major shit about me. She was really two-faced, alright? Now, Lucy's sitting with them on the floor talking at this point and showing them her tattoo kit, which consisted of a broken tattoo gun, a chewed up wire, tattoo needles, and ink. There was no working tattoo gun. I was like, what the fuck? Why'd you even bring this, bro? And she's just like, I got needles and ink. It's fine. We'll do stick and pokes. And I'm just like, okay, whatever you say, right? Whatever you say. She's showing that shit to them, right? And I'm just like, okay, fuck all that. So I walk away. And me and Nathan are talking. Me and Nathan basically hung out almost the entire night tweaking and talking off this MDA. We were just talking each other's head off the whole entire night, right? Because, like, me and Nathan have always had this thing where, like, whenever we're at a function with other people sometimes and we don't really know them, we'll just go away and just hang out by ourselves. I don't know if you guys can relate to that or, like, do that with any of y'all's friends out there, but we would do that, guys. Now, look, so, me and him are talking when Lucy goes, hey, who wants free sticking pokes? Now, guys, almost everybody said no, which was a good thing, except for me. I now regret saying yes, because this is where this tattoo stems from, guys. This is where that tattoo stems from. Fuck you, guys. That's what she tattooed on my hand during that night. What the fuck was I thinking, guys? I do not know what I was thinking. You know, I should have realized she was literally saying fuck you, but that shit's in the past. It's gonna scar me forever, but it's in the past, guys. So, you know, she's giving me that tattoo. She's like, I got something special for you. Let me just surprise you. And she gives me that. But on a brighter note, guys, we were smoking weed at this point, too. I rolled up a good one gram joint. We were all passing it around, getting pretty fucking stoned. Throughout the night, everyone else had things to do. Some people were sleeping. Cody and Dixie were in Samantha's room and Allie's room doing their thing. That also made me a little jelly because I wanted to get me some too, you know, because I was on MDA and feeling kind of, you know. <laughs> I ended up getting me some from Lucy another night at the trailer, but that's for another story time, guys. That was when I did heroin and fentanyl, but that was the time I tried heroin. But anyways, me and Nathan, we were sitting there smoking this joint. We had no idea what to do, right? So we're passing it around I take a puff he takes a puff and me and Nathan get this idea we're like let's play guitar or he's like let's let, let's play guitar right he I don't know how to play guitar but he does right so me and Nathan ask Allie and Samantha if they had a guitar that Nathan could play right and to get them to like be like yes even quicker you know I'm like maybe they'll say yes if I'd let them hit this joint so I pass it to them right and they're just like no we don't and we're like fuck what the fuck y'all don't have a damn guitar that's fucked up and then Allie just goes I think we might actually hold on 
let me go look in my dad's closet. So, you know, she goes and looks, right? And eventually she comes back with an acoustic guitar. The fucking holy grail of guitars, guys. And Nathan instantly gets excited. His little stoner senses start tingling. And he starts tuning that bitch. His guitar senses start tingling, right? Now, when I say me and Lucy, Samantha, and DJ, and Allie gathered around in a circle listening to him playing guitar that night, I really mean that shit, guys. Music sounds amazing while on MD MDA. Mother, if I call it MDMA one more time, I'm gonna rip my big toe off and send it to the next person who comments Royal Stoners. I could literally feel the strums of the guitar. I couldn't even imagine how everybody else was feeling because, like, you know, DJ was on that shit too, and I don't know what other, other drugs everybody else was on. And, you know, Nathan was also on that shit. Let's not forget. But, you know, it was insanely wild. It sent chills down my fucking spine as he played that shit, you guys. But a little bit into him playing, I ended up drawing with Ali. He was still playing at the, the guitar, but we were drawing now. This was one of the first interactions me and her had together before becoming boyfriend and girlfriend. We had a lot of other interactions, though, before this, just not one like this. We were actually sitting there drawing together and talking, you know, listening to Nathan play the guitar and shit, when eventually Nathan's MDA wore off, and he started not playing the, t the guitar as much, and he started getting tired, right? Around this time, everybody was either tired or asleep, except for me, Nathan, Lucy, and Ali, I think. So it was just the four of us, right? Oh, and fuck, how could I forget? The dog was also with us, guys. That dog did not stay still the whole night. It was running around terrorizing everybody. Everyone else was asleep, and we decided since we were going to go to sleep soon, we should smoke some more fucking weed. That's a great idea. So late, Lucy pulled out her bag of weed, and I put in with her, and we rolled up a couple joints, right? A couple fucking smackertons. We were out of blunt wraps, so that's why we were rolling joints now, and Lucy had joint wraps, so, you know, we were in the fucking game. We were in the zone, guys. And we smoked them bitches to the stinger before we went to sleep. And then my MDA eventually wore off. It didn't really last that long. It lasted like seven or eight hours. I wouldn't even recommend it, honestly. It was a pretty shitty drug, but, you know, since we were the only ones awake at this point, we decided to go to bed. And I ended up asleep on the floor with a paper-thin blanket in a freezing cold trailer. And everybody else either slept on the couch or the floor. Now, we woke up the next day, right, guys? And as soon as we woke up, the dog was fucking running around everywhere, right? And the first thing we noticed was, damn, the dog shit everywhere in the fucking house. Now, this is where the story time ends, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If y'all did, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe for more, you guys. Don't forget to join the Discord. Don't forget to turn on post notifications. Go follow me on Instagram and Snapchat, you guys. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.